So I have made quite a few videos lately on which items to invest in, which investments have been successful to me, and which investments have failed. Point is, I have made a couple of videos about investing gold, but in order to invest gold, you also have to have gold. So I think it's about time we take a look back at some different ways to make gold, as well as which gold farms are still viable in Classic WoW as of March 2020. As Classic has been out for quite a while now, some gold farms have become outdated and some gold farms have surfaced, where you can make much more gold per hour than other gold farms. First off you have class specific gold farms. Like mages can sell dungeon boosts in pretty much every dungeon out there, most commonly RFC, Stockades, Scarlet Monastery, Marauden, BRD and Stratholm. Mages can actually make an insane amount of gold by doing this, but it does require some practice and skill. Rogues can also solo certain dungeons, most notably selling certain boss kills inside BRD to sell for example the Hand of Justice, which people still pay a pretty penny for. Speaking of item selling, I should also mention that mages can solo princess in Marauden, usually in fire or arcane spec, and sell loot from there as well. Back to rogues, you can also run through certain dungeons, typically Dire Maul and Marauden, to look for treasure chests and mining or herbalism nodes. This is particularly good for rogues because you can stealth past mobs, and if you do see a treasure chest, you can burst down the enemy pack guarding the chest if you have to. As a hunter, you can sell Dire Maul tribute runs, where once again you can sell boss loot, or you can simply clear the dungeon and sell the boosts from Dire Maul, allowing you to make some very easy gold. You can also solo princess, but since every caster out there can do this with enough skill, I'm just gonna say every caster can solo princess, so I don't have to keep mentioning that over and over. Hunters also have an edge out in the open world when soloing elites, like for example in Winter Spring, when hunting for the Eye of Shadow, because they have a pet that can tank for them, and if the pet dies you pretty much have endless kiting options as well. Tanks and healers can charge a fee for tanking or healing dungeons, or they can reserve bound on equip items, unwanted loot, or just any sellable items in general, since tanks and healers can be difficult to find. The better gear you have as a tank or a healer, the easier this service will be to sell, because you can advertise your gear, making you much more attractive to groups looking for a tank or a healer. If you're not playing any of these classes, do not fear, as I will also cover a couple other gold making methods in this video as well. First off, there's this somewhat new gold making strategy that has gradually become more and more popular on my server, which is doing gold bid raid runs. This is particularly popular in Molten Core, where people are eager to gear up their alts, but people also do this in Blackwing Lair. The harder the raid is, the more profit you'll get because people will pay more for the items. This can be done in several ways, but the most common and most fair one is that when an item drops, you bid gold for it, the one that bids the most gold wins the item, and the gold goes into a pot that is shared between the members at the end of the raid. A couple of guildmates of mine did this last week and both got exactly 400 gold each from one Molten Core raid. Keep in mind that all gold is shared equally between members, meaning that the total pot in this case was 16,000 gold, which actually isn't that much, but 400 gold for the one Molten Core run is definitely good money if you ask me. This gold making method will also keep increasing in efficiency, as more liquid gold is introduced to the game by people farming gold, and by more raids being introduced to the game allowing more runs per week. Even when set G comes out, selling MC runs like this will still grant a nice chunk of gold, because people are still willing to spend the gold gearing up their alts. This method does however require you to have some gear yourself, as well as knowledge on boss mechanics and just some raiding experience in general. So in case this is not something for you, I will also cover some open world farms and some profession farms. But if you do have some knowledge on raiding in Classic, and you have some raiding gear, I would definitely recommend you check this method out for yourself. You can start by recruiting more people in World Chat and LFG Chat right now, and a week from now you too can be doing gold bid raid runs, so there's really no excuse here, it's all about how you want to make your gold. But let's talk about some other gold making methods as well. Let's start with a couple of profession specific gold making methods, since those are probably the easiest to do, and can be done at pretty much the same efficiency by every class. 
First off, you have the common Black Lotus hunting. This can be very profitable since Black Lotus is on most servers around 140 gold. So if you can find one per hour, that's 140 gold per hour. Other than that, you can also choose to go out there and farm other herbs for a lower amount of gold per hour, but more consistent gold per hour if that makes sense. Which herbs you should farm is dependent on what server you play on, but for most of us I think Winter's Bite, Dreamfoil, Grum's Blood, Mountain Silver Sage and Plague Bloom are all selling quite well. For these herbs I'd recommend doing complete laps around Alterac Mountains for Winter's Bite, Ashara for Dreamfoil and Mountain Silver Sage, and Eastern Plague Lands for Plague Bloom. You can also farm Fire Bloom in Blasted Lands or Burning Steps, these are currently selling for 80 silver apiece on Fire Maw, and when I farm them I can consistently obtain a bit more than 2 stacks per hour, giving me 32 gold plus per hour from farming these. Not the best amount of gold, but it's very relaxing and very consistent as well. Fire Bloom also has the potential of going up in price in Phase 4, Phase 5 and Phase 6, due to it being used in Fire Powered Elixirs, used by mages once they start switching to Fire Spec for raids. As an alternative, you can also farm for Briarthorn, Liferoot, and Swift Thistle in wetlands. This, this may sound like a bad idea, but when you combine those three herbs, I make a consistent 30 gold plus per hour from those. Swift Thistles are around 1 gold each due to Thistle Tea used by rogues, and Briarthorn and Liferoot are also going up in price as well. This is a route I mostly use when leveling herbalism myself. But I now have 3 Herbalists, and I have noticed that this route is very very underrated, and that is also probably why it's so profitable, because not many people are doing it and I get a lot of herbs each lap around the map. Now I'm not going to talk too much about mining in this video, since I still don't have a miner in Classic WoW, but if you do have mining, there's two ways you can utilize this. You can either mine in dungeons, like I mentioned briefly earlier in this video, if you choose to go this route, I would recommend being a rogue so you can stealth through the dungeon and look for mining veins. Otherwise you can use mining, just like herbalism, and do laps around the map in high level zones to scout for mining veins. Mining veins are usually more frequent at the edges of the map, so look for mountains or any place where it seems natural for mining veins to be. Alternatively, you can search up whatever vein you're looking for on Wowhead and get some pretty good farming routes over there. If you have fishing, you can obtain pretty decent gold per hour from fishing in Tanaris. The fish that will make up your gold per hour here is the Firefin Snapper, Stonescale Eel, Spotted Yellowtail, and Winter Squid if you're fishing in the winter. Spotted Yellowtail is actually used in Phase 5 for the AQ War Effort, so don't throw those away. I expect those to reach maybe 2 gold per stack in Phase 5, which isn't a lot, but it's definitely something. Additionally, if you fish in floating wreckages or in pools, you can also obtain treasure chests to open, junk boxes to send to your rogue, and Rumsey Rum Black Label that you can sell to Twinks. This is probably best to do in the winter because of Winter Squid, but if you feel like fishing, this is a pretty good and relaxing place to do exactly that. For open world farms, there is one item in particular I really like farming for, which is small flame sacks. This item will mostly be in demand while fire protection potions are in demand, so until phase 4 or phase 5 I would say. There are so many places you can farm this, but for me there's 4 spots in particular that I like. First off you have the one in Feralas where you kill sprite darters, and then you have 3 different whelp locations, one in Swamp of Sorrows, one in Badlands, and one in Wetlands. The order of which I prefer these farms is in the same order as I listed them, so Feralas being the best spot and Wetlands probably being the worst spot out of the 4 listed. Feralas does however have a few less mobs, and they're a bit more scattered, so farming for small flame sacks in Feralas is best if you also combine it with herbalism farming, or just farming other beasts for skinning. For pure small flame sacks, I would probably recommend Swamp of Sorrows, because even though the drop rate is lower, the mobs are all in the same spot, meaning you don't have to run around looking for mobs, and you just run around this little lake in the southwestern part of the swamp. Also, there's a chance of obtaining the Emerald Whelpling from killing the Emerald Whelps, which can sell for a nice chunk of gold as well. Also, there's generally less competition for mobs in the Swamp of Sorrows than in Feralas, due to Dire Maul and just Feralas being a huge zone for world PvP for some reason. 
One downside here, however, is how fast you kill the mobs, so you should definitely combine this farm with killing other beasts and skin them, or herbalism. My recommendation would be killing spiders just east of where you kill the whelps, since spiders have a pretty good loot table. Other great open world farms is pretty much any elemental out there, whether that be fire elementals, air elementals, water elementals, or earth elementals. The only problem here is that most spots are taken, or highly contested by other people either from your faction or from the enemy faction. Either way I will show you a couple of screenshots from where I farm my elementals on the screen right now, just so you get an idea of where to farm them, and then you can check out the farming spots for yourself. As a little side note, light feathers are currently selling for 1 gold each on my server, and you can obtain them in starting zones and zones like Westfall. If you go to the northwestern part of Teldrassil, you can also farm harpies there and obtain a few light feathers there, although the drop rate is really really bad. There are lots of harpies there though, and you can acquire quite a few linen cloth and level 5 to 10 green items you can sell on the auction house to people leveling alts. I will upload another video where you can obtain over 100 light feathers in 1 hour, I obtained 20 of them in 5 minutes myself, and I will show you the exact location in that video. That video should come out on Monday, so subscribe and turn notifications on. Alternatively, if you want to take advantage of that farm before it becomes public, the information is currently up on my Patreon specific Discord server. So there it is, a semi quick video discussing different ways to make gold just to give you guys an idea of how you can acquire gold. I have already made a lot of videos in the past about different open world farms in Classic WoW, as well as instant farms as well, so I didn't feel like repeating myself by showing multiple examples of all types of farms because I have already done that. If you have any questions about gold making in WoW, Leave a comment down below or join my Discord server through the link in the description and ask me over there. We have a huge gold making community on Discord with over 500 members in that server, so if you want to learn more about gold making and investing in items and so on, that's definitely the place to be. Once again, a huge thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. Without you guys I would not be able to push out this much content, and your support truly means a lot. VIP level patrons can see their names shown on the screen right now. If you want to support me on Patreon as well, you can do so by clicking my Patreon link in the description, or click that pop-up button on the top right. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.